Hey guys, hope you've all had a wonderful New Year's. We're back at the compound kicking off the New Year with a fun repaint on this Indominus Rex. I'll be using this Hasbro Indominus Rex hybrid design as the inspiration for this repaint, as well as a little rule of cool. I'm also starting a new thing this year in my videos where I'll be featuring repaints from other compound members at the end of each repaint video. So stay tuned to the end of this video to check out the first fan features of 2024 and be sure to follow me over on Instagram to know more about submissions and how to submit your repaint to be featured in a future video. With all of that said, let's go ahead and get started. So to make painting a little easier, I decided to just play off the factory plastic and add the deco on top of that. But I also want to first add a heavy wash to the figure to bring out all the details in the sculpt and to give the skin a darker vibe so it's not just that plain light gray. So before I start slinging paint, I wanna first take some rubbing alcohol and wipe the figure down to remove any oils or factory grease and grime that may be on the surface of the plastic. This process will just help give the paint a clean surface to stick to. With that done, now I'm going to take some Apple Barrel Pewter Gray and start to scrub that down into all of the recessed areas. Really want to make sure you work it down into all the little nooks and crannies and that the entire figure is covered in the paint. Once the figure is covered, you want to dry the paint fully and then take a paper towel with some rubbing alcohol and scrub away the paint from the raised areas, leaving the dark gray in the recesses. Now that I've got that wash laid down, we can start to throw down some colors. The first set of colors going down is gonna be the blue running down both sides. For that, I'm using a mix of Wicked Colors Light Blue and Color Shift Blue. I'm laying it down with my airbrush, but you can also just dry brush this on by applying several thin coats. With the base blue done, now I want to actually just highlight some of the scales along that. So I'm gonna go back in with just straight color shift and I'll just dry brush the raised areas along the blue skin. This will help accent all of the details in the sculpt and that color shift paint, when the light hits it just right at the right angle, it sort of flip flops the color and just makes it look a little bit more interesting and kind of cool. So now that I've got the blue done, I'm gonna go ahead and start to lay down the red. And I'll start off first by filling in the back with my airbrush since it is a large area and this will just be a lot quicker this way. And then once the bulk of that is done, it's time for that grind, laying down all of the stripes. I'm using Vallejo Red Ink for the stripes. I like to use inks when I can because the pigment in them is really strong and it flows nice and smooth onto the surface. And when the paint flows smooth, you end up with really, really crisp, clean lines. So I've got all of the red stripes done and now I'm going to move on down and tackle the hands and feet. The Hasbro toy looks like it had like gold hands and feet, which is kind of odd. So I wanted to figure out a way to do the gold color uh, and to make it look a little bit more natural and not so like out of place. So I experimented with laying down a coat of transparent burnt umber first to add like a dark base to the skin. And then I'm going back over it with some gold paint and just lightly dry brushing the raised areas. That way they have that gold hint without looking like it's pure 24 karat gold limbs. So we'll go ahead and knock out all of the little final details before we move on. So I'll paint the eyes red just to kind of give it a nice menacing look. And then I'll hit all the claws with some satin black and then hit everything with a coat of matte varnish just to lock that red in because I did save the most tedious part for last and that's adding all of the white outlines onto the red stripes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get resituated and we'll knock those out. So instead of using the traditional fine tip brush and white paint like I normally would, I had this idea to experiment using a new tool and that's a white paint pen. I picked this up at Walmart because I was curious to see if it would make adding stripes and outlines a little bit easier on this repaint and let me tell you, it definitely does. If you plan on using one of these, make sure you get the ultra fine tip. I tried using the fine tip and it was just a little too blunt to work around these sharp stripes. So adding the white outline is pretty straightforward. Um, I'm kind of blown away with just how well this paint pen works. I'm definitely gonna be picking up some other colors to sort of experiment on uh, future repaints just to see if it will make things a little bit easier. Cause honestly doing white with, you know, thin down white paint, that would have taken multiple coats on this and it would have just taken hours to do it. I blew through the other side in no time, maybe like 30 minutes, if, if even that. So um, it, this does take a, a little time to get used to, you know, to kind of figure out how the, the paint flows across the surface, especially on a textured surface like this one. But by the time I got to the, the uh, this side, 
side here after I finished the other side it was smooth sailing so if you try this maybe practice on like a beater figure first just to get a feel for it so with the white outlines laid down this repaint is finally done and ready to rock and roll so we're going to jump over to the photo booth and finish this video up so this was a fun repaint to do. I always love doing wild decos on these dinosaurs and I always appreciate you guys hanging out with me and watching. And I hope this repaint has inspired you in some way, shape or form. If you give this or any repaint a shot, remember to tag me over on Instagram at the Jurassic Junkie because I always love seeing the repaints you guys can come up with. But in the meantime, if you need more Jurassic related content or you want to know where to buy the supplies I use in my videos, links to all of that will be in the description box below. You guys take care and I'll see you around the compound.